Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the romantic musical success, Through the Years. Starring Gordon McRae and his famous guest from the Metropolitan Opera, Nadine Connor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another memorable musical is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, Nadine Connor and I will sing the immortal Vincent Newman's music of Through the Years. Imagine that we are in an English country garden, ablaze with summer flowers. That quaint little cottage with the thatched roof, that's where I live with my niece, Kathleen. Uncle John, where are you? Yes, Kathleen, here I am in the garden. Uncle John, have you heard the news? I heard the bells ringing, my child. I, I knew what that must mean. How do you feel about the war? We won't soon forget this year. 1914 will be a time of despair for many people. But we should think of it with hope, too. For when men take up arms to crush the evil in the world, that should be a time for rejoicing, don't you think? I think so, Uncle John. Bells are pealing, hearts beat madly. Earth's blue ceiling smiles down gladly. my heart, I hear the drums roll, deep in my heart, beating with joy, symbols I hear, way down in my soul, reaching my ear, thrashing with joy, hail a new day, welcome a bright sky, humbly I pray, happy am I, drums in my heart, striking a new chord, drums in my heart, thank the Lord. Time for me to tell you something. Something awfully important. What is it, child? I I know how you feel about Kenneth Wayne. As far as I'm concerned, the Wayne family does not exist. But Ken's enlisted. He's doing his duty. A million more will do the same. But I'm in love with Ken. Oh, I know something happened years ago. Something about Ken's father and Aunt Mooneen. I refuse to discuss it. If you have any love for me, you'll forget about this Kenneth Wayne. I'll try, Uncle John. Now, Kathleen, you will meet other young fellows. Handsome ones, too. How can you give your heart to the son of the man who... Who what, Uncle John? I've got a right to know. 
What is the good of stirring ancient ashes? This will be our last night, Kathleen. For a while, anyway. Oh, Ken. I'd ask you to wait for me, only the way your uncle feels, I... I begged him to talk to you. You... You can't imagine how bitter he is. The sins of the father. Oh, Ken. It's funny, I hardly knew my father. And yet something he did before you and I were born may keep us apart forever. And we don't even know what it was. Something happened here in this garden the night he married my Aunt Mooney. It must have been 40 years ago. But for Uncle John, the wound never healed. He never let it heal. Sometimes, late at night, when he thinks I'm asleep, he... He comes out here in the garden and he talks to her. But she's dead. He talks to her just the same. Uncle John! I thought I heard voices in the garden. Uh, good evening, Mr. Carteret. Kathleen, I had hoped you would make it clear to this young man that he is not welcome here. Even on the last night before he goes to France? Oh, Wayne will always be a trespasser. I'll go to your room. Good night, Finn. Goodbye. Does it bring you such happiness, sir, to hurt others, even those you love? You speak to me of hurting others? You, the son of Jeremiah Wayne? Good night, young man. Good night, sir. Oh, Mooney. Mooney. Did you call me, John? Mooney. It's been so lonely without you. It's going to be lonely for him, too, and for Kathleen being apart. They don't even know what it means. Why, they're in love, just as we were. How could they be? Such things happen, John, whether we will them or not. I heard him singing a song to her here in this garden, just such a song as you sang to me when we were young and in love. I, I don't want to hear it. A tender song, and he seemed to mean every word of it. destroyed what chance for joy I had in this life. Oh, how bitter you are, John. Haven't I a right to be bitter? Oh, for a time, perhaps, but it's been so long, so long. I'll hold on to my hate for Jeremiah Wayne and all his clan as long as I live and after. I'm sorry to hear you say that, John, for it's no use for me to come and see you like this while you hold such hate in your heart. Mooney, you won't leave me. 
I'll not come to you again, John, until you learn to forgive what ought to be forgiven. so sad, Kathleen? No reason. You haven't had a letter for weeks. It may not mean anything. It may be fate, then. Fate and a strange kind of justice. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Kathleen, it's time I told you what happened here in this garden 40 years ago. Does it matter? Yes, I think it does. It was a warm evening, like this one. The garden was all in bloom, just as it is now. Your Aunt Moonyeen and I had come from the church. We were Mr. and Mrs. John Carteret. Lord, how happy we were. Oh, everything was perfect, darling. Was it, my dear? Oh, as long as I live, John... I hope we're always as happy as we are at this moment. All sunny days. No storm clouds there. <laughs> I wonder why Jerry Wayne didn't come to the ceremony. You didn't invite him, did you? Well, why shouldn't I? I thought, well, surely you've broken off with him, haven't you? <laughs> why, of course. But, but that's no reason to be rude to poor Jerry. Somehow I, I don't trust him. I... Well, then I'm glad he didn't come. From now on, all things shall be arranged for the pleasure of my lord and master. Oh, Mooney, it's your happiness to count. <laughs> Through the years, I'll take my place beside you. for the wedding, Mr. Wayne. Don't get high and mighty with me, Carteret. Munin's mine, you knew that. And I can't stand to think of any other man. Oh, no. No, Jerry, that won't do any good. I'm not afraid of him. Only a coward carries a gun. Oh, John, be careful. He won't fire. Won't I? Oh, no, you can't. Oh. Oh. Munin. Dear God, I killed her. Munin. Why did you throw yourself in front of me? Oh, I'm a, a selfish wife. If one of us had to die, I'd rather I was the one. Moonin, don't leave me. I won't leave you, John. I'll be with you 
Just a moment, we'll return for Act Two of Through the Year. You know, the sound of a raging storm can be mighty pleasant to listen to if you're sitting relaxed, all warm and snug inside, and the storm is outside. Much too often, however, even though it's raining, snowing, or sleeting, even though you can't see your hand in front of your face and the roads are icy and hazardous, much too often you have to travel in bad weather. And unfortunately, it's pretty hard to tell very far in advance what the weather will be this time of year. That's why it's such a comfort to know that despite the weather, you can always count on safe, comfortable train travel to get you where you want to go. Let the storms come. Let the weather do its worst. Inside your warm, snug hotel on wheels, you relax in comforting security as your powerful passenger train glides smoothly and safely over the steel highways that bind our country together. A highly trained and experienced crew of courteous railroad men is at your service, men whose job and pleasure it is to make your trip a pleasure you'll long remember. At night, you'll sleep soundly in any one of a wide variety of comfortable accommodations. You'll eat leisurely and delightfully in cheerful up-to-the-minute dining cars. Enjoy a good book or good conversation in friendly lounge or club cars. Feast your eyes on the enchantment of the passing scenery. Yes, and when you arrive at your destination, you'll arrive fresh, rested, ready to pitch into business or pleasure with real enthusiasm. Remember, too, when it's time to return, your train will be ready and waiting to relieve you of all the work and worry of getting home. Next time you travel, then... Let the railroads carry you safely, dependably, and comfortably to your destination. Enjoy all the many advantages that are yours only when you travel by train. You'll be glad you did. Now here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Vincent Human's Through the Years, starring Gordon McRae as John Carteret, and Nadine Connor as Munyin. Come to my heart, my little drum roll. Deep in my heart, made it with joy. What happened then, Uncle John? Your Aunt Munyin died in my arms. And Jeremiah Wayne ran off to Canada. He was never heard from again. Until this son came back. Uncle John, sometimes I see you late at night here in the garden, and you seem to be talking to someone. She made me a promise before she died. Moonin said she would never leave me. Even through the wall of death, she would come to me when I called. I suppose a good many people might say I was losing my mind to believe such a thing. I understand, Uncle John. She has come to me again and again at night. And in the daytime, too, I, I see Mooney as real as life and more real. She 
is there in all beautiful things. I always see your eyes within the stars above your head. I'm afraid you know the meaning of loneliness, too, don't you, child? I'm learning what it means. Yes, I'm learning. I suppose. I ought to be celebrating with everybody else. The good news. But, oh, it's so hard, Uncle John, since he didn't come back. Does Kenneth Wayne still mean so much to you? I know how you feel, and I don't blame you. There, there, child. It's not too late to marry him, if you like. What? I found your Ken at the railway station. He's alive? Not only alive. He's waiting for you now. Outside, in the garden. I don't believe it. Ken! Kathleen. Oh, Kathleen. Oh, Ken, darling. What happened to your leg? I was a darn fool and let a sniper catch me. That's all. Why didn't you write? Why didn't you tell me? He wasn't ever going to see you again. That's what he said when I found him. I didn't want to come here, but your Uncle John made me come. You didn't want to see me? I can't ask you to marry me, Kathleen. I'm not well. I'll take care of you, Ken. I'll make you well again. No, no, it wouldn't work. I... What do you mean it wouldn't work? Kenneth Wayne, I once told you that you and my niece could never see each other. Now I I want you to know it's my deepest wish that you two should be married and find happiness together. God bless you, Uncle John. Now go. Go along with you, young man, Kathleen. I just want to sit here in the garden for a bit wait for the moonrise. John. Oh, dear John. Moon, you've come back. Well, I've never really been away from you, my darling. But while your heart was so 
full of hate. You couldn't see me. It was right, wasn't it, that I should forgive him? How could you ever blame him for what his father did? You should have given him your blessing years ago. Why, Mooney, you're in your wedding dress. Beautiful and as fresh as young, as if 40 years were only a day. Why, you are young too, young. I'm old. My face is lined. I see no lines. I'm bent and feeble. I... Why, you are straight and tall as a poplar. You see me like that? I see you like that. Why, it's a miracle. It's love. And from now on, you and I will be together always. Through all the years there are and will be. Meanwhile, our thanks to Janet Waldo, Harry Harbour, Carlton Young, and to our entire company. Through the years, with book by Brian Hooker, lyrics by Edward Heyman, and music by Vincent Human, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? This month, all of us have an opportunity to join medical science in the fight against heart disease, the nation's most deadly disease. Extensive research, education, and community programs can and are doing much to help prevent, cure, and lessen the effects of heart disease, which strikes young and old, rich and poor alike. This program, sponsored by the American Heart Association, needs your help. Support your local heart association and help your heart fund. Help your heart. Thank you very much, Marvin. Now, here again, folks, is our delightful guest, Nadine Connor. Where's the show train bound for next week, Gordon? For a county fair in merry old England. Oh? And that is fourth out. It's going to be... Ah, so pure. Ah, so bright. Oh, that'll be a treat. We'll all be listening to you and Gladys Fortout singing Martha. Thank you, Nadine. And we'll be seeing you again real soon. All aboard. Well, dear friends, it looks as if we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, well, how now, Brown Cow, until next Monday night, and Martha, on behalf of the other members of the cast and of the American Railroads, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Years was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can be seen starring in Three Sailors and a Girl in Technicolor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying good night for the American Railroad. Now, stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> The voice of Firestone features Caprice Ponzel on the NBC radio.